Hey everyone, welcome back. Now, so far, whatever examples we tried with our ArrayList class, those were using predefined types like string, right? So now we are going to try an example using our own custom type or user defined type, okay? But before that, we need to get clear about one concept. So let's take an example. So let's create two integer objects, okay? So I have created two integer objects over here and I've kept the content same, which is integer two, okay? Now let's compare these two objects uh, using the equal operator. So I'll just say if int one is equal to int two, then print uh, numbers are equal, else print numbers are not equal. Now, similarly, let's create two string objects, okay? And again, I'll keep uh, the content same, which is car. And again, let's compare them using the equal operator. So I'll say, if str1 is equal to str2, then strings are equal, else strings are not equal, okay? Now, in this case, the expected output should be, uh, since both of these numbers are same, here we should get this as the output. And even here, since both of these strings are same, here we should get this as the output, right? Now let's save this program and run it. But as you can see over here, uh, we are not getting the expected output, okay? So this is because the equal operator over here, it compares the references, okay? That is the memory addresses. It does not compare the content. And since both of these objects are different in memory, then similarly over here, since both of these objects are different, their memory addresses are going to be different. And that's why we are getting this result over here, okay? Now, if we want to compare the content of any two objects, then we need to use the equals method and not the equal operator, okay? So what I'll do is, I'll just change this to dot equals, and here I'll specify in two, then similarly over here, I'll just replace this with dot equals, and here I'll specify string two. Now let's run this program and see what we get as the output. And yes, now we are getting the expected result, okay? Now, uh, this equals method which we saw, it is a part of the object class, okay? Now we know that every class in Java, it extends the object class, right? So every class will have this equals method, but the equals method which is present in the object class, it compares the references and not the content. So our integer class and our string classes over here, it internally overrides this uh, equals method in order to compare the content, okay? And that's why we are getting this result, okay? Now, uh, the reason for explaining all this is because the methods which we used in our previous tutorials with our array list, uh, like remove all or retain all, uh, they internally use the equals method for comparing the elements of our array list, okay? And since so far we used only string type of data, uh, we did not face any problem with remove all or retain all methods because string class already overrides the equals method internally, right? But if we use our own custom type and if we don't override the equals method, then some of our collection methods may not work, okay? So what we'll do is first, let's create a custom class Okay, so let's say uh, we'll use the same uh, class which we used in one of our previous tutorial, uh, that is student. Okay, so I'll just copy paste the student class over here. Okay, now uh, I'll keep everything else same. Uh, I'll just change uh, some things over here. So let's say I'll make this these variables uh, private. Okay, it's a good design to make the variables private and have their getter and setter methods. So I'll just uh, generate the getter and setter methods over here. And by the way, for uh, getting this pop-up, I used control shift S and generate getters and setters and then select both of these and click on okay, right? I think there's some issue with the formatting. That's why it is adding some extra spaces. Okay. So yeah, our class is ready. Now I'll just remove this code from here. Now let's create an array list of student. Okay. And now let's add some student objects to it. Let's say S1, S2 and S3. Now I'll create another student list. Okay. Let's say student list two. And again, I'll add some student objects to it. Let's say S4, again S3 and then S6. 
So we have kept one record common over here and that is S3. Okay. Now I'll just uh, print the content of both of these lists. Okay. Again, by using a simple for each loop, right? So this is for student list one and this is for student list two. Now let's try uh, one of the operations. Let's say we'll try remove all first. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll say student list one dot remove all student list two. So this should remove all elements of student list one, which are present in student list two. So basically it should remove this particular element. Okay. Now again, I'll print the elements of uh, student list one to see uh, if we get the correct output. Okay. Now let's run this program and see what we get as the output. So this is our list one. This is our list two. And even after remove all, we are getting the same list. And again, that is because we have not overridden the equals method over here. Okay. So it is not able to compare the objects, right? So what we'll do is I'll just go over here and say shift alt S and from here, just select generate hash code and equals. Now, whenever you override the equals method, you also need to override the hash code method. Okay. And that too based on the same fields. Okay. Now we'll see more about this later for now. Just remember that we need to override both hash code and equals method, right? There is some kind of contract between them. Okay. So I'll just select generate hash code and equals from here. Now over here, uh, we need to decide on what field the comparison should be made or on what basis we will distinguish two student objects. Okay. Now in this case, if we use only the name, then it may not work because we can have two students with the same name, right? But role number is going to be unique for every student. So it will work. Okay. Also, if we use a combination of both, that is a combination of both name and role number, it is going to work. Okay. So in this case, uh, let's use only role number and now let's click on OK. Right. So as you can see, uh, Eclipse has generated the hash code and uh, equals method for us. Okay. Now just uh, ignore this code for now. Okay. Uh, it is basically just uh, used to compare uh, the objects based on role number. Okay. Now let's try this program again. Okay. Let's save this. And yes, now you're getting the correct output. Okay. So this is list one. This is list two. And after remove all, it has removed the elements which are present in uh, list two. Okay. And that is S3. Okay. Now again, let's try some other operations uh, like uh, retain all. Okay. So in this case, uh, this should retain all elements uh, of student list one which are present in student list two. Okay. So it should retain, uh, only S three and it will remove everything else. Okay. Now let's run this and yes, it is working fine. Now in case of add all, um, we, we need not implement or override, uh, the equals method. Okay. So if we use add all over here, then in this case, uh, there is no need to override the equals method because add all doesn't require any comparison. Okay. So if I run this over here, it has added successfully. Now, even if I remove the hash code and equals method in this case, it is going to work because add all does not involve any comparison. Okay. So if I run this, we are getting the same output. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial.